Hi folks, welcome. Let me tell you the story of this beautiful place behind me. I'm here in a beautiful lake in the Alps in the north of Italy. And in this place during the second big war, Italian soldier, while they was escaping, they throw in the water all the ammunition. So they already clean up the lake, but I'm pretty sure I can find more. I want to build myself a scuba drone, so I already know what to do. You probably just read it in the title of the video. The best part of this project is the new camera I'm going to install in the front. I'm talking about this 360 camera and gives me the chance to look all around me and also see the bottom part of the lake and search for fish above my head. So I can't wait. But first, intro. Radio waves doesn't go underwater, so even very expensive submarines absolutely need to have a physical cable that transmits video signal and control the submarine itself. This cable can get very heavy and this let the submarine go very slow and not a precise movement. So today I have the solution for it. A genius idea, I want to recycle this old keyboard that controlled these kind of security cameras. These are dome camera and if you think about it, they can move up, down, left and right and many other things. So you can see that on the keyboard I can even control the iris, the focus and the zoom. We can then move the summary up and down, left and right. We can then turn on the light and move the arms, for example. But it's up to you what are your needs, for example. And the best part is that I can push the signal up to 1200 meters. And the best part of this keyboard is that it uses only two very thin cables to control all these things. I can then control three motors, a light, arms, and many things through two very thin cables, which means the cable that connects the control keyboard to the submarine will be very flexible and lightweight which is amazing. I think I'm the first one on YouTube thinking about this. So let's move on. I already know what to get. And I'm talking about a very old iron. Inside of it, I already know what to get. In all my life, I dismount so many pieces from this kind of objects. And I'm searching from an aluminum container that contains boiling water. I love it because I can open it removing all the screws and there is a gasket and this will seal all the electronic of the submarine underwater. The next component I'm going to use are these pumps, usually are used in pond or little lakes and are waterproof. I need three of them and the procedure is very simple. I need to convert them into propeller for um, for the submarine. So very, very carefully, I will remove the white part, which is just a container around the real motor. Right now, the motor doesn't give enough propulsion to the submarine. Okay, it's a pump, but it's not efficient as a system. So I need to take away the white plastic, and you can see here there's an impeller. This push the water all around it, but will have no pushing force. So I will replace this impeller with a propeller that came from a remote control boat. I will do this procedure with all three motors and there's now a little problem. The propeller doesn't fit into the shaft of the motor. So I need to make myself a little adapter. I can take this electric connector and cut away the plastic because I just need the brass part. And it's very simple, I can secure the little screw on top of the motor and on the other side I need to search something that have the same sh uh, dimension of the hole of the propeller. Searching inside all the box I have here in my shop I found a very big nail that fits perfectly inside. I just need to cut the head of the nail so it doesn't slit inside of the 
propeller and secure everything on the shaft and this is the result. I repeat this procedure with all three motors. But now let's put this away and take instead the aluminium container. This is very interesting, I want to draw all the parts I have into Fusion 360 so that I can plan how to project the shape of my submarine. So I want to have two propellers on the back and one in the middle so they all work together so they can move the submarine up and down, left and right, backwards and forward and this is the shape I decide to design. So let's see my CNC how we'll cut all the parts, beautiful, but now let's think about the material I want to use to build the body of the submarine. I found in a local shop this very interesting part, I never saw this material, it's like plastic but you can work it like wood and it's waterproof which means I can go underwater without problems so let's place everything on the CNC. And now it's so nice to see that the CNC cut everything so precise that the motor fits inside. I glue them so that I'm sure I will not lose them and probably because I'm going to hit a lot of water plants I'm going to install these protections around the propellers. This blue part came from the original water pump and I can glue all the parts in place. Beautiful. It's perfectly centered and I love how it's coming up. So I didn't spend money for this project. I mean, the water pumps came from China, was very cheap and all the other parts are just recycled. This container can go up to 50 meters underwater without problem. Just reading the pressure it can handle. It's important to remove the residue inside the bottom of the container and also replace the rubber gasket so that I'm sure we'll have no water leaks. The cable I'm going to use to connect everything is this Ethernet cable. Inside of it I found eight very thin cables but I will use only four of them. So the orange is for the video signal and the green one is for controlling from the keyboard to the motors. Beautiful. So this will go inside and I will secure and close waterproof with some epoxy glue the, the, the hole where I pass through the Ethernet cable. Epoxy glue is great for this project because it sticks very well to plastic, rubber and also metal like this brass pipe. While the glue dries, let's talk about the camera. This is a live view mode camera. It came from the back of a car and I want to make it waterproof so that I can see live where the submarine is going, what I see in the bottom of the lake. So I take apart this old watch and I want to use this glass to seal the camera. The camera will be protected inside this pipe and the glass will be glued here in the front. Epoxy glue is used as usual to seal the parts. So you can see that the parts have the same dimension and after waiting 5 minutes that the glue dries I can place the camera inside and secure from the back with some silicone standard silicone and then push in place also the back side of the clock watch beautiful this camera will transmit video signal up to a little color monitor i have next to the keyboard which is this one 
Okay, it's taking shape. Now I just have to make some little holes here on, in the aluminum container because I have to pass all the electric cables of the motor. So I choose a drill bit that have the same dimension and drill all the holes. I made more holes because I want to have other cables that let me give the power to charge the batteries and also place a general switch that turn on and off all the electronics. So I can pass the copper cables into the holes and secure everything later with epoxy glue so it will be waterproof. So it's coming okay and now I just have to take a circuit board. This is a very cheap circuit board that can, is compatible with the keyboard I showed you earlier. This circuit has relay and use a method of communication that is very interesting. It's an RS485 uh, protocol, which is the same of the keyboard. I just have to set the same protocol from the keyboard and on the little circuit board, which is standard. So in this case, I'm using this kind of a keyboard and this kind of circuit board, but I'm, I'm saying to you, it's standard protocol, so you can use any kind of protocol and circuit. You can see that every time I move the joystick or I push switches, the circuit board recognizes everything. And later I will show you also that I need to install a little transistor to connect everything. To power all the electronics, I'm going to use a couple of these lithium batteries that came from a drill and they fit so precise inside the aluminum container and as well fit perfectly the little circuit board here inside. So I'm making like a sandwich with all the parts and let's see if everything closed. This is just a test to see if I can close the container and yes, close great. <laughs> now let's see the schematics of everything that is inside the submarine. I have the control keyboard, the circuit board, the battery, transistor, motor, and a little circuit that convert DC to AC. So let's con connect two very long cables from the keyboard to the circuit board. Let's power the circuit board, taking the power from the battery, converting it into 24 volt AC into the circuit board. And now let's connect the output to a transistor that in this case works as a relay and we can then bring power directly from the battery to the motor. I can repeat this process with all the motors. Well, here in Italy we just say something. Man grows up, they never stop playing, they just change their toys. And today this is my toy. I want to add a little rule of the captain of this submarine, so I have to scan my face. And after five minutes, this is the result of my face scan. I import it into Fusion 360 and now I can print it. I have already a, a resin printer and with this I have a very precise result. After 20 minutes, the print is ready and I love this little head. I want to place it in a special place in this project. I'm talking about the aluminum container. I want to place it just in the middle so that little rule can see everything is happening all around him. Beautiful. <laughs> I need to protect it with the, with a plastic cover. Great. Now Bene, I'm back here to the lake and I love the design of this mini rule of summary. Rule of is ready. I only need to add a beautiful camera. I'm talking about this Insta360 camera. It's already waterproof. I can go down to 10 meters without problems. But because I want to go deeper, I also bought this protective case. This is a scuba case for this camera. I can mount it in the front of the summary. This gives me the view in the post of everything that is happening around me and instead the front live view camera that transmit live video signal through uh, little copper cables bring the signal in live so I can use both to search the bottom of the lake.
So today, let me tell you, I feel lucky because everything worked great. The front camera here works and all the motor works great. And I was pretty scared the water getting inside this, uh, this container, but everything works. So I'm so excited. Even if I didn't find any war uh, objects, it's okay. I mean, I'm so happy about the resolution of this camera and oh, <laughs> just going on with a boat over this beautiful water. So I hope this can give you inspiration for your projects. If you want to leave a thumbs up, this is very appreciated. Let me grow with my YouTube channel, which is going very bad. So just a thumbs up is very appreciated or a comment if you want to give me some little advice or if you like what I, what I build. So see you soon. I leave you here with my two previous projects. So, so check them out and see you soon. Ciao, ciao.